Hi there, I'm immigration attorney Heather Poole. Have you been separated from your family for the past 10 years because of the permanent bar? Have you served your time abroad after re-entering the U.S. after removal order and having been stuck abroad that long? There may be a way to finally come back home again. I regularly speak with U.S. citizens who are extremely distraught after they followed another attorney's advice to file a provisional waiver or filed a waiver themselves only to find out that their spouse has triggered the permanent bar and the consulate is not allowing the spouse to come home. It's the worst kind of consultation I can have because there's no waiver for the permanent bar and the U.S. citizen has to make the uncomfortable and nearly impossible choice whether to uproot the family and move abroad to be with the immigrant for the next 10 years or try to make living apart work, despite the financial difficulties, the emotional devastation, and the family responsibilities the U.S. citizen spouse often now has to juggle alone. The permanent bar is a devastating part of our immigration law. It states that anyone who has been in the United States for more than a year of unlawful presence and then leaves the U.S. and attempts to illegally re-enter after this, whether or not they are successful, they could be caught, they trigger the permanent bar. The permanent bar is not really permanent, but it's called that because it's so devastating. It creates a 10-year bar for the immigrant to be able to re-enter the U.S. There's no waiver available. It doesn't matter if they have a U.S. citizen child or children or a U.S. citizen spouse or parent. The immigrant is stuck abroad. Another devastating impact of the permanent bar is that unlawful presence under the age of 18 counts for the permanent bar. That means kids who were brought here as children through no fault of their own by their parents who return briefly to their home country when they are teenagers because their parents make them for a family funeral, for example, they trigger the permanent bar when they return to the U.S. The permanent bar can also be triggered by receiving a removal order and then leaving the U.S. and then attempting to illegally re-enter after that removal order. People do this when they're desperate to reunite with family or to keep their jobs so they can continue to support their families. However, it has the same devastating impact. They are stuck abroad for 10 years, no waiver. But after serving this time abroad, this long 10 years, couples assume that an immigrant visa can now be approved for the immigrant stuck abroad and there's nothing more to do because the 10 years has been served. Not true. Being able to come back after the permanent bar time has been served is still at the discretion of the federal government. The government will make you file an I-212 application, an application that is usually reserved for people who are trying to come back early following a removal order. The I-212 application for the permanent bar can be more challenging, especially if the couple has been separated for the last 10 years and the U.S. citizen has been able to raise the children on her own, for instance, without the financial support of the immigrant national who has been living abroad. Oftentimes, the U.S. citizen even sends money abroad to help support the immigrant. They cannot find steady work to be able to support themselves in their home country. This poses a difficulty in arguing now, 10 years later, that for one, they're not used to being apart for, from a financial perspective, and secondly, that there's still a strong need for the immigrant to come back to help the family in the U.S., who've been able to live just fine without him for that long. Just missing each other, a common consequence of any kind of removal or separation due to an immigration violation, is not going to be enough. So what do you have to prove to be able to have a fighting chance at coming back after the permanent bar has been served out. First and foremost, you must prove that you, the immigrant, have actually been gone for the last 10 years. You've been outside of the U.S. for the past 10 years. There needs to be a paper trail proving that you didn't try to re-enter the United States or haven't been living back in the United States to wait out that 10-year period. Things like bank account statements, credit card statements, leases, utility bills, education bills, classes, medical records, or employment records can be helpful to prove that you've actually been where you said you've been for the past 10 years. Whatever you can find to prove that the immigrant has been where he or she has said that they have been for the past 10 years will be important to show as part of this application. Second, you should prove why, you're, why the immigrant is needed to return to the U.S. If you are the U.S. citizen wife, for instance, sponsoring your immigrant husband for an immigrant visa, how has your life changed within the last 10 years without your husband? Has it gotten worse? For instance, from, from a financial perspective, have you had to ask for public assistance or welfare, take two jobs to make ends meet, lose one of your kids to the system because of your lack of the ability to support your family without your husband's income? If you were relying on your husband's U.S. income to help you get out of this funk, 
Why should immigration believe that he will be able to find a job now with no connections for the past 10 years? Is that job offer realistic? The need for the applicant services in the United States, that's what you have to prove. Third, USCIS must want to grant you the waiver. It's completely discretionary. They need to like you, the immigrant. Have you used your spare time in the last 10 years to help others? Have you volunteered in your local community? Have you tried to better yourself by educating yourself or improve your skill set to be a functioning, contributing member of society? Have you been able to financially help your family? How have you reformed from your past mistakes and turned your life around? CIS will also consider when deciding whether to grant your petition how long you were previously living in the U.S., your family ties, responsibilities now, and whether you have a case currently waiting for you. If you have no way to immigrate back to the U.S., if your wife hasn't filed an immigrant visa for you yet, for instance, it may be premature to file a permanent bar I-212. If you have other grounds of inadmissibility that you won't be able to waive, such as drug trafficking, money laundering, false claim to U.S. citizenship, um, which is usually happens before a USCIS or an I-9 to get a job, then it's unlikely that your case will be approved. CIS is going to look at all of this, too. If you need a misrepresentation or a criminal waiver, which don't expire in that 10-year period you've been serving, you'll need to take care of that, too. Get your ducks in a row first. CIS will also consider all the negative aspects of your immigration history, the severity of your past violations. Use this opportunity to explain the reasons why you did what you did and why you would be unlikely to disobey immigration laws or any laws in the future. Consult with a competent immigration attorney to help you mold the arguments and work with you to best tailor your case to the right options for you and your family. You've been waiting a long time. Get it right the first time so you won't have to wait longer than is necessary. There are lots of factors to consider depending on your case history, your immigration goals, and timeline. Consult with an experienced waiver attorney today. To learn more about the permanent bar, visit our website at humanrightsattorney.com. There's more info on inadmissibility and I-601 waivers if you need one of those too on our website. Good luck, and don't forget to like us and subscribe if you would like to see more videos.